Hello everyone, my name is David Twesigomwe. I'm from the Sydney Brenner Institute for Molecular Bioscience at the University of the Witwatersrand Rand in Johannesburg. I'm happy to present this talk from my master's work titled Characterization of Cytochrome 2D6 Pharmacogenomic Variation in African Populations an Integrative Bioinformatics Approach. Pharmacogenomics is a study of how genetic variation influences drug response, and this regards mainly to drug efficacy and toxicity. Cytochrome 2D6 is one of the most important pharmacogenes as it metabolizes about 25% of commonly prescribed medications, and this includes anti-cancer drugs such as tamoxifen, uh, it also includes opioids, and antipsychotic agents. However, genotyping CYP2D6 is quite challenging due to the structure variants in the gene locus. I've included this image from Twist et al, which shows examples of CYP2D6 haplotypes, or star alleles as we popularly call them. So here from part A we can see the location of CYP2D6 on the minor strand of chromosome 22 alongside two pseudogenes, CYP2D7 and CYP2D8. There is a 94% homology or similarity between CYP2D6 and CYP2D7, and this causes a number of structural rearrangements, such as these hybrid genes in, in part D of the figure, and these tandem rearrangements in part E of the figure. For example, here we can see an exon conversion of CYP2D6 to 2D7. Other examples of, of uh, structural variants include this gene deletion, which we call star 5, and these gene duplications. Um, so these structural variants make sequencing of the CYP2D6 region really difficult, and also aligning short read data to the region really difficult. Another thing to note from this figure is are the functional annotations for the different alleles. So we see normal function alleles, decreased function alleles. This could be due to missense variants in the haplotype. Um, then we have non-functional alleles, which could be due to frame shifts and stop loss or stop gain variants in the haplotype. And we see increased function alleles from the duplication of functional gene copies. So our objectives were to compare the performance of CYP2D6 star allele calling algorithms given the challenges we've seen in genotyping the region, uh, to identify CYP2D6 star alleles in African populations with whole genome sequence data. Uh, here whole genome sequence data is really important because it enables identification of the structure variants which, which we've seen in the figure before and then to predict the CYP2D6 metabolizer phenotype distribution in African populations, and then also determine the frequency of CYP2D6 regulatory variant in African populations. So our workflow was in two phases. Uh, we, we, the first part was the benchmarking study, where we used 75 publicly available whole genome sequence datasets from the CDC's Genetic Testing Reference Materials Program. And here we benchmarked three algorithms. The first one is ALDI, the second one is Astrolabe, and the third one is Stargazer. And we also tested whether using a consensus genotyping approach involving all the three tools is better than using either tool alone. And afterwards, we used that consensus genotyping approach to genotype CYP2D6 um, from 458 African whole genome sequence samples. And these are, were high coverage samples around 30x. Um, so the bulk of the data was from Southern and Western African populations. And also most of the data was from the Human Heredity and Health in Africa Consortium OH3 Africa in short, um, and also from the Simons Genomes Diversity Project. So after calling star alleles in CYP2D6, we used the activity score system to predict the phenotypes. 
And here on the right, I've provided a breakdown of how we assign scores. So we assign scores based on the allelic activity. So 0 is for a non-functional allele. 0 0.5 is for a decreased function allele. However, in special cases, we can give 0 0.25. Uh, then we assign 1 for a normal functional allele and greater than 1 depending on the duplication of the gene copies. So from the results, we can see that ALDI and Stargazer were much better than Astrolab at, um, at calling C2D6 star alleles. And from the breakdown of the discordant cases, we see that it's because ALDI and Stargazer were much better at calling the structure variants in CIP2D6, and that's why they performed better overall. However, we also see that using the ensemble genotyping approach involving all the three tools, it is, uh, we had much higher accuracy than if you use either tool alone. And it is also shown here that haplotypes called by all the three tools are true positive. So here we have a breakdown of the allele distribution in our data set, which is represented by the red, uh, which the HUD here represents the high coverage African ADME data set from our study. And we compare it to the sub-Saharan African um, studies, uh, which the previous sub-Saharan African studies and other world populations. And here the most notable differences are with the star 5 which is the gene deletion and we can see that the frequency of star 5 in African populations is much higher than that in other populations and we also see star 17 and star 29 uh, which are African specific but also the frequency is, is comparable in the admixed Americans. Uh, the reason why these alleles are interesting is because they are decreased function alleles because of these missense variants which we've shown in which we show in this table here and that means that they are responsible for a, a lot of the enzymatic of the variability in the enzymatic activity um, that we see across Africa and then I've also highlighted this structure variants here which we are not going to be able to call if we had not used whole genome sequence data and the three algorithms that we used. Then here, this is the distribution of the metabolizer uh, status. And we see that when you look at the ultra rapid metabolizers, you see that there is a higher frequency of ultra rapid metabolizers in Western Africa compared to Southern African populations, whereas it is the reverse when it comes to poor metabolizers. And this is because of the different distribution of the alleles which we've seen in the figure bit in, on the previous slide. And then also we looked at the frequencies of the long-range regulatory variants. So here we see two SNPs in linkage disequilibrium, and these ones are located about 100,000 base pairs away from the CYP2D6 gene, but from GWAS studies, there is evidence to show that they regulate the CYP2D6 gene expression. So this means that it's not just enough to genotype CYP2D6 uh, alone, but it's also, we also have to look at the regulatory variants as they can impact the phenotype. So in conclusion, combining whole genome sequencing and a combination of pharmacogenomics star allele calling algorithms facilitates accurate genotyping of CYP2D6, and then the CYP2D6 activity score facilitates the prediction of the metabolizer status of an individual, and then uh, other factors such as the long-range enhancer polymorphisms may play a role in CYP2D6 expression. Uh, these are my references, and with that I would love to thank the following my supervisors, Prof. Scott Hazelhurst and Prof. Zane Lombard, um, the ADMI project team, the core team at WITS, and external collaborators. I'd love to thank um, GSK for the funding and NRF, and also I'd love to thank the International, International Society for Computational Biology for funding, for the fellowship. Thank you.